Next, we have Ms. Donna Gilmore, the founder of SanOnofreSafety.org. Ms. Gilmore. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. We're just waiting for your slides to come up on the screen here, I think. Okay, well, I can start before they come up. Okay. Uh, uh, so I, my background is in uh, designing and deploying uh, mission complex mission critical systems uh, for the state of California. <clears throat> and I've attended a meeting at the NRC uh, in 2014 where the NRC, Mark Lombard, Al Santos, uh, Daryl Dunn, you know those folks, um, they said that the canisters, these thin wall canisters, could not be inspected for cracks, um, could not be repaired, and they knew they were vulnerable to cracks. I could not believe what I was hearing. Why would anybody put high, highly radioactive fuel in containers that can't be inspected repaired and maintained, I, I, I was in disbelief. Uh, so I ended up spending over the last decade researching everything about dry storage and, and, and transport in order to, to look at what the options are and what we should be doing. Go to the next slide, <clears throat> please. Now, there's a plan to propose of the transport, uh, the, uh, these uninspected thin wall canisters across the country. That will no more solve our nuclear waste problems than rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic would have stopped it from sinking. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, I never come to executive management with a problem without a solution. So I look through the world and, and this is what we need to do. Step one. We need to require thick wall, maintainable, transportable storage casks before these thin wall canisters reach the age uh, where they will fail. Uh, the Swiss are an example. They have these thick wall casks. The thin canisters are a little over half inch, half inch to five eighths inch thick. The thick ones are 10 to over 19 inches thick. They don't have the inspection issues, they, are, they can be inspected, they can be maintained, they can be repaired, they can be opened up to see what's going on inside, just like they are at Fukushima. Um, ASME N3 was created, American standards were created for these pressure vessels and the thin wall canisters that the NRC has been proving do not meet those minimum uh, safety standards. Uh, we're going to, the NRC should be requiring ASME N3 instead of giving exemptions to it. Um, we're going to need hot cell dry fuel handling systems in order to repackage the fuel. Um, the NRC should stop approving exemptions um, where they're allowing disbursement of, of um, funds to procure these thin wall canisters. Um, in reality, the thick wall casts are less expensive considering their maintainability, lifespan, and reduced risk of nuclear disasters that can, ca that can cause evacuations, radioactive contamination, and can affect the economic and uh, security uh, stability of our country. Um, step two, once you get them in thick wall casts, store them in air-cooled buildings for additional environmental security protection away from coastal and flood risk. But you must do step one before you step two. Next slide, please. Okay. Right, okay. The, they are vulnerable to criticalities and uh, major radioactive releases and hydrogen gas explosions. I'm not going to be able to go through all the slides, but I have slides that address those issues. So um, the current uh, canisters, you know, we've got a little blur glowing on there, are, are vulnerable to short-term cracking. The Sandia 2019 report on DOE technology gaps, uh, please try and focus that slide, please, on uh, technology gaps. Um, states this is a short-term problem of through, through wall cracking. And after decades of having these canisters, they've got no solutions to that. When they use the term inspection, they don't mean inspection for cracks. They mean inspection for some precursors for cracks. And they're not even 
doing that on, on all the canisters. So uh, let's just go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Now, you can look at this chart and see the difference between the thin canisters used in the United States and what the rest of the world is using. Next slide. This, at Fukushima, they use thick wall cast. Those surprised survived the earthquake and the tsunami. Thin canisters can have partial, undetected partial cracks. There's no seismic or earthquake rating for those. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, um, I'm gonna skip this slide. All right, there's a picture of a microscopic crack. Now, the cold spray they're talking about to repair cracks, I've read the instructions for that. You have to scrape out the crack. It's down, it's gonna be subsurface. You have to scrape it out so you get good adhesion and they can't do anything like, like that. Um, um, let's just go on. You can read these later. I don't wanna run out of time. Go to the next slide, please. All right, and regarding transport, the NRC engineers, I participate in a lot of NRC meeting. The NRC engineers really try and do the right thing. They required Holtec for their transport cast. They said, you have to show there's no defect, surface defects greater than two millimeters. You need to ensure that the high burn of fuel inside, since it's been in dry storage, which they know can degrade, has been maintained so that it can be transportable. What did the NRC approve? If the radiation levels are low enough, you're good to go. Um, so the, I, I urge uh, um, the commission to make sure that the actual engineers that are trying to do the right thing are, are, are able to do that. The problem seems to be somewhere above there. Uh, now, this the interim storage sites, if the canister arrives leaking, their plan is to send it back, which there's no plan for that. The plan to put a, uh, um, a can leaking canister inside another canister, it, it would likely overheat. Uh, there's been no thermal analysis of that. Uh, let's, next slide. Um, let's, let's go to the next slide. Okay, well, this is a now problem. Um, and the NRC said in 2014 that once a crack starts, it can go through the wall in 16 years. We have canisters already. 32 years old. I submitted comments to the NRC, to the new reg 2224 on high burn up storage and transport, and I have not really received an adequate response to that. Next slide. Um, next slide. Uh, and the NRC and EPRI are saying we don't have enough humidity at San Onofre for corrosion. They're ignoring the fogs, surf, and onshore winds. Next slide. This is a picture of a whole tech lid. You have an airplane fall on that. You tell me what's gonna happen. Next slide. Now, EPRI, the report they're using to say we won't have problems for over 80 years. The EPRI report ignored coastal conditions. They ignored a two-year-old Dalva Canyon that already had conditions for moisture to stay on the surface, dissolved salt. They ignored the South African Cobra tag that the NRC said was comparable to the canisters. It had leaks in only 17 years with cracks that were up to 0.6 inches long. Most canisters are only a half inch thick. That same report used assumptive words over 254 times. Next slide. Next slide. And Holtec admits that even it's not practical to repair a canister, um, it, that it's not a path forward. Next slide. I agree with him on that. I agree with Christine on that. Um, the whole the, I can't. I don't have time for these slides, but please review the slides on the problems that we have with the whole tech canisters for above and below systems. Next slide. Um, I, I don't think I have time to go through the uh, the rest, but this is another example of an NRC uh, inspector saying it's impossible to inspect and repair these canisters according to the code. Next slide. Uh, let, next slide. Um, I, I think I'm just going to skip the rest of these slides because I'm out of time, but I've written them so you can look at them without narration. Um, and I, I 
put in the here the critical pieces of information that are needed and to note there's not enough time to cover the high burn up issues. We could really use more meetings on this so we could go in depth in these particular issues because this is critically important. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present. Thank you, Ms. Gilmore.